Justin on this episode of Postcards from the Fringe. BT takes us on a story time through his explorations of the Maze of Darkness located in Budapest, Hungary. Let us know in the comments other creepy places that you want to explore or have already explored. Give this show a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this at www.deathscience.tv. And now, here's this evening's postcard. In the Hungarian capital of Budapest, deep beneath the streets, there's this system of natural caves. Over the years, it's been converted into everything, from a medieval torture chamber to safe haven from Soviet bombing during World War II. The maze of darkness remains accessible to this day through an unassuming alcove right off the main drag of Castle Hill. But when you walk down there, you don't walk alone. The echoes of those who lived and died down there ring through every step you take in that chamber. But that's no reason to be afraid of the dark, right? Now, Budapest is built on this huge, elaborate cave system. Ten million years ago, most of Central Europe was submerged underwater, what was called the Pannonian Sea. By four million years ago, it had shrunk down to Lake Pannon, which still covered the majority of Hungary. As the flora and fauna died in the water, the mineral concentration increased and the ecosystem shrank. The capital of Hungary is also famous for its thermal springs, which were thought to be supernatural because of their own weird mineral concentrations. When the Pannonian water soaked through and met with the miracle water of the thermal springs, it turned slightly acidic and carved out this huge formation of caves that spanned like 62 miles. Tectonic shift drained Lake Pannon, and since Budapest is located right on the fault line, all that has left is all those caves. It's a terrible place to build a city, well, with all the sinkholes, but try telling medieval Hungarians that. Now, throughout its entire history, Budapest has used this cave system for strategic superiority. Buda proper was built around 1250, when King Bela IV got tired of being sacked by Mongol raiders. So, he took his whole kingdom, and he moved it 200 meters up a hill, then he built a wall around the hill. Walls, being the only Mongolian weakness, effectively deterred them, and medieval Buddha thrived. From that point forward, whenever Buddha was threatened, the soldiers, and in the case of the fisherman Bastion, also the fishermen, would man the walls, and the rest of the populace would shuffle down into the caves like mole people. The strategy worked so well that it wound up being how Budapest, as a city, survived Soviet bombings in World War II. Since then, it's become a tourist trap, illustrating the storied history of Budapest and the military versatility of caves. I was walking through Castle Hill, and I saw the entrance to something called the Maze of Darkness. I've never had much of a sense of direction, but for that reason, I'm more drawn to things like that. It's like a reaction formation. You know, I can't get away from it. It's like, I think it's a compensatory thing. I went down, I had no choice. The labyrinth itself was divided into four sections. The first was a wax museum that was based on an opera that was in turn based on some drama that took place in Buddha Castle. The second was the titular Maze of Darkness. The third was the cell where King Matthias kept Vlad the Impaler prisoner for 14 years as punishment for eloping with his adolescent daughter. The fourth was, inexplicably enough, a bunch of posters advertising other caves around the world. I did the Maze of Darkness first. You don't really appreciate how dark dark gets. All the darkness that we experience in the civilized world is disrupted by, like, cell phones, moon and starlight, reflected lights, glare, there's always something. Even when we close our eyes and have something that resembles darkness, it's not real, true, blackest pitch darkness. The maze was deep enough underground that there was nothing. They left this grody, damp rope running along the wall to guide you through it, but that was it. That was your only tether to the world. So dark in there, you're not even sure if your eyes are open. I don't normally rattle, but when you're in that kind of dark, it's 
stumbling around completely helpless. You realize that there's anything in there with you that can see even, even a little bit better than you. It's over. You don't have a chance. A chihuahua with light amplification goggles could have ended my life. And then, some cheeky Hungarian son of a bitch planted these wax demon sculptures just in this cell, in the dark. No warning, no context, nothing. One minute, you're in the absolute deep space darkness of the subterranean cave. The only thing warring you to this world is this water damaged rope on the wall. And the next, you turn the corner, and you see these four foot tall nightmare goblins just staring at you from this dim blue light. You can barely see them. So you're like, what, what the hell is that? And you get closer, and it's demons. So that might make you cry. So, in getting to Dracula, I scared the hell out of everyone by accident. Nobody else seemed to want to wander around the foggy, unlit dungeon alone for some reason. So when I'd pass couples or clusters of girls, there was nothing I could do to warn them. I just kind of stalked out of the darkness alone. I'd lumber out of the mist, and they would freeze, and in some cases actually scream, like full-throated scream, and like... I'm not gonna apologize, like, it's not my fault, I just, like, smile sheepishly and keep going. I, what else do you do in that situation? So, it was just me alone when I got to Dracula. They dressed it up with a lot of spooky Halloween sound CDs, but the manacles and torture implements hanging on the wall looked authentic enough. They looked ancient. Dracula's cell itself was empty. That was a nice touch. I even checked out the cave exhibit but it was just really sad. With Dracula at large and those horrible blue children still lurking around somewhere, I decided to make my way to the exit, got lost three times, and then escaped. It's hard to be down in that kind of blackness, just hearing your heartbeat and your footsteps echoing off the walls and nothing else, and not think of all the people who died down there either in the wars or as political prisoners. Even when you're alone, it doesn't feel like you're the only one down there. I couldn't see anything, but I certainly felt like I was being seen. So what do you think? Are you gonna do it or what? You can't miss it, it's right off the castle hill. So that about does it for today's Bastard Travel in collaboration with Death Science LLC. All rights reserved. Check us out at www.deathscience.tv. See you there. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Postcards from the Fringe with BT Chieftain. You can find and support his adventure blog at bastardtravel.com. Let us know in the comments. Would you dare venture through the dark caves where Dracula himself was held prisoner? Till next time, stay curious and stay creepy.